Your hands are your most valuable tool. You rely on them always. Think for a moment what life would be like without one of your fingers. Try writing or holding a hammer without using your thumb. We use our hands all day, every day. So injuring our hands or fingers would drastically change how we go about our lives. This training video will help you identify potential hand hazards and methods to prevent hand injuries, select appropriate PPE to prevent hand injuries, and provide guidance on how to care for your hands in the event of an injury. Hand Hazard Identification and Prevention. You and your company should constantly be looking for and removing any dangerous equipment or tasks that could injure your hands or fingers through engineering controls and administrative controls. Engineering controls are built into equipment you use every day to minimize the hazards. A good example of an engineering control for your hands is machine guards that would be installed on equipment like a bench grinder. If you remove a machine guard, then you're at risk of an injury. That machine guard over the grinding wheel is an engineering control and should never be altered. Administrative controls are just as important as engineering controls. Your company should use and constantly update policies and procedures to identify hazards and keep you safe. A Job Hazard Analysis, or JHA, is a good example of administrative control. These procedures should always be used and followed exactly. If you must deviate, follow the procedures for deviations to complete the task safely. How else can you stay safe? Ask yourself constantly throughout your day, what can I do to protect my hands? You are the most critical factor in identifying and preventing hand hazards. Be alert and aware, and you can avoid poor positioning of your hands and keep them out of harm's way. Be on the lookout for pinch points, struck by and caught between hazards, and keep your hands out of the line of fire. A rule of thumb is always to be able to see your hands performing work. Be aware of the energy sources in your environment. Lockout tagout rules are designed to prevent the accidental startup of machinery. Imagine what could happen to your hand if someone accidentally started a machine while your hand was inside. When working with machinery, make sure the equipment has been locked out and all energy sources have been disconnected before you work on it with your hands. Use equipment to move materials whenever possible. Always use the correct hand tool for the job and use it properly. Inspect any objects you might be picking up for slivers, jagged edges, burrs, and rough or slippery surfaces before handling. Do not wear loose-fitting clothing, jewelry, or other items that could become entangled in machinery. And finally, always make sure you are wearing the proper gloves for the work being performed. If your employer can't make the task safer for your hands and fingers through engineering controls or administrative controls, employers must ensure that you wear the appropriate PPE. In the case of your hands and fingers, this means using and wearing the correct gloves. How do you know which gloves you should use? Well, OSHA standards state that employers must select and require employees to use appropriate hand protection when employees' hands are exposed to hazards. But you should know about the proper gloves as well. There are many types of protective gloves available. However, gloves designed for one function may not protect against a different hazard, even though they may appear to. Always wear suitable gloves unless noted otherwise on the JHA, and refer to the safety data sheet, SDS, if the job involves potentially hazardous chemicals or materials. Leather gloves protect against cuts, burns, sparks, moderate heat, or fragments that may be generated by cutting, grinding, or chipping. Leather gloves should also be worn when handling rough materials, pointed objects, or objects with splinters. Fabric gloves protect against dirt, slivers, chafing, and abrasions. They do not provide sufficient protection for use with rough, sharp, or heavy materials. Coated fabric gloves are generally made from cotton flannel with napping on one side. By coating the unnapped side with plastic, fabric gloves are transformed into general-purpose hand protection, offering slip-resistant qualities. These gloves are used for tasks ranging from handling bricks and wire 
to chemical laboratory containers. Chemical resistant gloves are made with different kinds of rubber or various types of plastic. As a general rule, the thicker the glove material, the greater the chemical resistance. But thick gloves may impair grip and dexterity, having a negative impact on safety. Butyl gloves are made of synthetic rubber and protect against a wide variety of chemicals. Butyl gloves also resist oxidation and abrasion and remain flexible at low temperatures. Natural, latex rubber gloves are comfortable to wear, which makes them a popular general purpose glove. In addition to resisting abrasions caused by grinding and polishing, these gloves protect employees' hands from most water solutions of acids, alkalis, salts, and ketones. However, latex gloves have caused allergic reactions in some individuals and may not be appropriate for everyone. Neoprene gloves are made of synthetic rubber and offer good pliability, finger dexterity, high density, and tear resistance. They protect against hydraulic fluids, gasoline, alcohols, organic acids, and alkalis. They generally have chemical and wear resistance properties superior to those made of natural rubber. Although intended for jobs requiring dexterity and sensitivity, nitrile gloves stand up to heavy use even after prolonged exposure to substances that cause other gloves to deteriorate. They offer protection when working with oils, greases, acids, caustics, and alcohols. Insulating rubber gloves with leather protectors are to be worn when working on or near electrical equipment. Remember, all gloves should be inspected before each use to ensure that they are not torn, punctured, or worn out in any way. Gloves that are discolored or stiff may also indicate deficiencies caused by excessive use or degradation from chemical exposure. When reusing gloves exposed to chemicals, always take into consideration how toxic the chemicals were and factors such as duration of exposure, storage, and temperature. Do not reuse disposable gloves. Throw them away in the proper receptacle. Keep gloves in the area they are used. For example, do not take them with you to the lunchroom and do not wear them when answering the phone. Keep gloves away from your face or mouth, especially gloves used while working with toxic chemicals. Remember to always remove gloves and wash your hands before eating and drinking, and always seek medical attention for any hand injury, no matter how minor. Conclusion. Throughout the day, your hands can encounter any number of hazards. You are the best defense for identifying and getting rid of these hazards before they injure your hands or fingers. Your company should be using engineering and administrative controls to keep you safe, but it's up to you to always be thinking, what can I do to protect my hands? Remember to always wear the correct gloves for the task, and if you do get hurt, seek help immediately. Make sure your hands last a lifetime. They are the only pair we'll ever get.